Hey folks, good morning, it's Brian. Uh, we played RQG last night. Yay! More Chronicles of Car Rain. So anyway, don't need these. When we left the party last, they had um, used <laughs> the escaped slaves uh, as a, uh, a uh, power crystal sort uh power crystal filling source so they filled the crystals and they used that mag those magic points to uh heal <clears throat> what they could because some of the party still had some some damage points after they were all done and then they went uh there's some confusion and i don't remember honestly um did they go back to the slaves and then come forward again because super tie was damaged up front and uh, Wolfgar was damaged in back, but there he does. Everybody's healed up and they're all back in front of the double doors. So they arranged themselves. They got a pretty decent setup. The idea is open up one side, kick open one side. Guys over here uh, with the lights, so the lights into the into the room, and they, you know, what can we see? Now, I'm a physics major. Door, right? Light coming through. How much light spills over to the other side? I don't know. I'll probably look it up. So I know, I know there's going to be some spillover, but basically the light's going to go from the source of light across the edge of the door, and everything in that direction is going to get lit up. So essentially half the room is lit up. And um, so I draw it out. It's roughly uh, eight meter circle diameter, eight meter diameter circle. There's a uh, large basin in the center um, on a stack of skulls. And then further back is this uh, obelisk-ish, maybe statue kind of thing. And there are curtains on either side of it. I should go back behind it, too. There is a guy in here, a fighter. He's off to the left as you look in the room. So he's in the darkness. Right, and then players are on the right looking through the light into the room. Um, I didn't make some scan rolls. I just click, if you get a special, I'll just see the guy out there. Um, but they didn't. But they see the 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 the, the, the um, shoot the water thing <laughs> and other stuff in there. Um, Lars goes in. His intent is to go uh, to the right of the basin. I let him make a scan roll. He's going in to see if he sees the motion off to the side kind of thing. Uh, he did get a special, so he sees the guy. So he stops midway, turns, and he engages. Um, and then everybody just kind of piles into the room at that point. So we've got... But because of, of movement restrictions, etc., there are only two engaged with the... Uh, the uh, bodyguard and uh, Borak is heading up to the, uh, the curtain with the lantern. He's going to light it on fire. Um, Wolfgar goes up to the basin. Okay, so when they first open the door, Strike rank one, inside is a uh, darkness spirit. Not an elemental, a spirit, darkness spirit. He's got fear, he's got three rune points. Um, but when they kick on the door, you only see two, so he fires the fear of the two. Um, Lars makes his save. Oh, one of the mechanical things that I do, instead of when we do power versus power, I don't roll for the bad guys on their attack. I let the players roll the defense, like a saving throw. Um, I just have to reverse the, the numbers on the chart. Uh, so Lars made his saving throw. Borak missed his. Um, so he's demoralized for 20 minus constitution melee rounds. He's got a 19 constitution. So for one melee round, he's demoralized. Fairly useless. Um, so they go in. I just add, add, ask a question though for me on 
reversing that chart because for this specific spell, um, the level of success determines the um, the severity of the effect. But the special and the critical percentages aren't calculated in when I reverse the the chart because the number value goes down. And and uh, you know failure is not a special and a fumble is not a critical. So I've got to figure out. Those no, those percentages beforehand, let them roll as the attack. Saving throw, maybe I have to think about that. That's that's going to be an issue. Okay, so anyway, uh, Borkster moralized. He's going to go up and burn the curtain. I, I probably could have said no. He's going to get back. I did. Um, other people come in. Um. <clears throat> There's some more shifting around, so they got the, the bodyguards surrounded. Um, all of their room magic is gone. Uh, the uh, priest has a head, so she's got more magic points. Um, so she casts her uh, spirit magic that she has. That speeds them up. She's got mobility and coordination. That would modify his, his attack while I didn't do. Um, that was it. She does have healing and she does have demoralize, or not demoralize, but uh, uh, disruption. Okay, so as the party's coming in, she's using the bodyguard, the familiar because the guardian spear stuff, um, to cast her demoralize. So she's cast her demoralize, the bodyguard's simply targeting people. Um, so uh, Lars took a shot, uh, uh, Restra took a shot. Uh, I think maybe Wolfgar took one, uh, but it was only a few melee rounds. And they take the, the fighter down because <laughs> he didn't have that shield three up, which is what they were fighting before. So, and he didn't also, he didn't also, he also didn't have uh blade sharp four up, <laughs> which made them pretty decent fighters. Um, and this guy, he, he's mediocre. So <clears throat> they take him down in, in short order. Um, Borak uh, makes his power roll, and so he starts the uh, curtain thing on fire, uh, and then goes back between the curtain and the wall room. Because it's actually the back. It's actually the back. He's got a curtain. He got a curtain come around him, and then there's the wall. So he goes between the curtain and the wall, and goes back, and that's where the priestess is, or the priest. Um, is oh, it seems like all of the the uh, cleric type figures I have are women. So anyway, so she's back there. So he comes around, and he bumps into her, right? Um, he says, "There's somebody back here." So people start shifting that direction. Um, strike rank one, rune magic. The uh, there is a spirit, the darkness spirit that's in the the statue. Um, that fired off the fear spell. He's got one more fear, which he fires off, but they made their save. And then it moves out um, and does spirit combat with, as people come up, because there's three folks from, Lars is one of them, spirit combat on Lars. Priest is back, strike rank one, summon, uh, is there spirit? Well, summon spirit thing. So it pops up and spirit combat with Borak, spirit combat with Lars. Uh, people moving up. Now, nobody can really fight back there except for maybe Borak, but he's too involved with the spirit coming. He does take a strike at her, if I remember right. Uh, but again, when you involve a spirit combat, you're going to strike somebody else. You have to make a... Uh, they call it intelligence roll, but it's sort of a cord, cord, concentration kind of thing, but it's not concentration. It's kind of confusing through there. But anyway... Uh, I don't remember if he hits or misses her, but it's pretty much insignificant. Nothing really happens. Um, and we bore through the uh, spirit combat, and Borak goes down, and the spirit possesses him. Uh, the spirit combat involves Lars. He says, everybody clear the room! Um, previously, uh, Wolfgar had knocked the, the uh, basin of water over. He's a pretty strong guy. He 
Although I gotta maybe recalculate the, the size of that water. That's like probably 10 gallons of water. We should be about 80 pounds, but, and then there's the pillar itself. Uh, oh, previously uh, a restaurant had swung down and hit it. Uh, pretty decent hit, got special, so it, it wobbled um, and it knocked the, the skulls down. Skulls were just kind of placed around the base kind of thing. Oh, well, probably was in mud, but you know, kind of glue it in. So they fall out. Um, but when uh, Wolfgar dumped the water and spilled all over, there happens to be a, uh, a trap door kind of thing over there. It ties into another part of the dungeon where there's a, a tunnel. A tunnel a, other word, but there's a tunnel thing. So people can actually climb up through that and come into the top here. Um, but obviously that's not sealed, so the water spreads all over and it starts going down there. Super tight knows that, so it goes to investigate. Um, I tell him, okay, it's it's not like a grate, but there's this it's not sealed, so water's going down through the seals. Let me make a list of roll see if you can tell how, you know how deep this hole, this pit is that the water's falling into, but he doesn't <clears throat> Wolfgar had seen the spirit combat, so he backs up. There was a whole lot of changing of intent during that this particular round of that discussing pieces of parts in that I should have okay, you're now going to decide to do something else. Fly strike leg, strike ranks later, you can actually move. You know, we're changing intent. There's a cost to that, which I miss, but it's fairly insignificant at this point. Uh, the only thing that would have changed is Wolfgar would have probably gotten attacked. So Borak turns. That spirit actually knows Blade Sharp 2. <laughs> so it's going to cast Blade Sharp 2 on his axe and it's taken off. Party is pouring out of the room. Uh, they just pretty much go outside the door. A couple of them spills to the left, uh, a couple to the right. Uh, Lars and Engrilar go forward. Engrilar's like, I'm leaving. <clears throat> so he's heading down towards the rope bridge. Um, the slaves see everybody come pouring out and so they start backing up. <coughs> Borak engages with uh, Arestra. Wolfgar who's behind can see this kind of thing happen, so he's going to shift back around so that uh, possessed Borak has got two folks on him. Um, Lars is kind of in the middle. He does blade sharp on his sword. So he can attack the spirit. Um, and then they do spirit combat. But he casts Spirit Block. One point Spirit Block, so that's two points of protection on Spirit Combat. Um, and I let him cast it on, on the Circle of Protection. Somebody has to cast the Blade Sharp on the Circle of Protection. No. <laughs> so, uh, we kind of have a slog past here. They end up, oh, Restra casts her last point, her last room point slash uh, for her axe. And uh, she got a crit on Borak. And I, yes, and he blocked with his axe. She did 30 points of damage. Now, this is, I let her go ahead and double the slash damage. I probably should not have because they specifically talk about um, Blade Sharp not doing that. So the slash probably shouldn't have either, but I, I let her. But it's just six six points, right? There's just 30 points of damage. <laughs> Eight points get taken away because the axe has 22 that hits in the abdomen, no armor protection. He's got seven points in the abdomen. 21 is three times. Amputation through the abdomen. Cut him in half. <laughs> Top half slams to the ground. Bottom half collapses. Uh, which is actually a good thing for me because a player for Borak... Um, wasn't getting what he needed out of the game, so he's, he's no longer playing. <laughs> uh, I was going to have something happen with Borak, but this was much, much better. Uh, okay, there's some discussion on knockbacks and that kind of thing. Uh, that's what uh, Wolfgar wanted to do, just do a shield bash, knock him down, get him out of the way kind of thing. Uh, so more combat with, with Lars and 
the um, the spirit darkness spirit. Um, so Wolfgar asks if anybody has any magic points left. The 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 crystal is empty, um, but he can do disruption. So Subutai comes up and uh, puts three points into the crystal. Well, he's standing over Borak's dead body. Spirit comes up, engages him in spirit combat. Um, kicks him down in like two melee rounds. May have been one, but uh, keep the player involved. I let him play the, the spirit and I get, just give him direction. Okay, you're gonna attack this person or you're gonna attack that person, you know, parry, 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 that kind of stuff, right? Um, So, Tupatai casts Spirit Block two points onto the circle, so they got four points of protection now. Uh, the Darkness Spirit actually has four points of Spirit screen up. <laughs> and the, uh, the other Spirit had Spirit screen as well, I don't remember how eight points now. Um, so as we're doing spirit combat and people are physically attacking the spirits, the spirits could use their their um, spirit combat skill as a defense. It says a defense against physical attacks. Um, so I interpret that as a dodge. And so it gets missed a few times. Um, uh, Angrilar is um, engaging the spirit, um, try to you know decrease his parry percentages because you know if there's three attacks, 20, 20, 20 kind of thing. Um, but he does not have a magic weapon or no magic on his weapon. So that's how I played it out. I lit, my, my concept was a spirit doesn't really know if there's magic on the on the blade. So as soon as he gets hit, he'll know it doesn't. But he keeps making his parries because he's got like a 90, you know, he's got 80, an 80%. Well, this is the darkness spirit. He's got 95%. No, it doesn't. The other spirit has a 95% spirit combat. This one has 80%. You know, so they're making their dodges all the time. There's not too much of it. Difficulty, um, and they keep you know working people down. Uh, Super Tai went down, gets possessed. He's attacking. Um, Wolfgar doesn't want to hurt Super Tai, so he tries to grapple him. He missed the first time. Super actually parried with his sword, took damage to the arm, um, but the second time got him around the head. So I was going to work out, you know, ideas. Okay, let's, you know, choke him out. Um, I didn't pull up, I could have, the uh, suffocation rules. Oh, that's not really, well, you can't have it if you're choking something in the air out. But the idea is you want to do a blood choke, you want to take the, you want to cut off the carotid arteries uh, to the brain so that the brain suffocates and, die, and collapses. But anyway, so he's trying to choke him out. Um, a restaurant was going to do a head shot. But the, the grapple happened before then, so she kind of holds back. We kind of discuss, okay, he's got the head choke on him. If you're going to swing at him, I was going to treat that as firing into melee. Um, so your percentage would be decreased by half if you made it, then it hits his head. Otherwise, you got a chance of, well, 50 50 chance of hitting him or, or Wolfgar. The idea is, ah, we're going to Wolfgar would hit, but we never got to that point, so she, she pulled her blow. Um, Spirit come with Lars. The spirit gets a special. Lars misses and goes down. At that point, somebody brought up. Excuse me. Somebody brought up uh, divine intervention. And I want to say, you can't always run. I should have said that much earlier. Much earlier. And this divine intervention, um, I think somebody may have mentioned it once earlier, earlier in one of the other games. I probably seem to bring that up as well. <clears throat> so Lawrence rolls his divine intervention, misses. Uh, Wolfgar rolls his divine intervention, zero five. They work. Get us out of here. So they wake up in the history's temple. Um, some wake up later than others because they have no magic points. They got to regenerate the magic points. Uh, others are just uh, you know, waking up from the, the distortion kind of thing. Um, 
Man, and I said, okay, this sounds like a good time to stop for me. And it was like 11.58 or something like that. It's a good time to stop. Uh, but there's a lot of discussion. Oh, and if you want to see the live play, it's in the description. Uh, discussion about what next. Wolfgar wants to do a caravan thing. Uh, Lars was quiet during all of this discussion, back and forth kind of stuff on what to do. Um, did they come back to the temple? Okay, guys. And then there's all this end of season phase stuff. <laughs> do I need to make my power gain roll? Um, now, winter worship services to get my, my room boys back. <laughs> Okay, guys, it's all like end of season phase stuff. Uh, and they have been running around this entire season, so there may not be any end of season phase, is what I'm thinking. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, after contemplation, do our, our skill checks, that kind of thing. There will be a couple of worship, uh, Angry Large, in a couple of days, uh, Isseries is in a week, um, uh, Lancromize at the end of the month, so they'll get that kind of stuff. But I don't think I'm going to give them the, uh, cult and occupation roles or the training or the research there's no time they didn't do that they ran around the wilderness trying to hunt down lunar guys in the middle of the camp middle of the uh, adventure so see a lot of you well we're pushing shoot 21 minutes um so we're going to need to do a session 30 point to zero like a zero session in the middle of the campaign on okay what do we want to do next because i've got a handful of ideas on what they can do with what i already have planned I mean, I certainly have no issue whatsoever with starting a, a brand new campaign, campaign doing something else. But they need to decide that, where we're going to go. Um, I'm going to see if I can't get that involved with, you know, emails and and messenger and chat. You know, I've got three venues to communicate with these guys because everybody has the same, has a single, there's not a single platform that's common among them all. So I'm pushing things out through three different mediums. Um... We need to figure that out. Now we may just wait and just do it at our next game on the 24th. Um, okay, session zero time, guys. What do you want to do? But then we, all we can do is just the skill roll stuff. We can't really do much because I need to actually plan uh, what, what, what we're going to do next from what they want to do next. <laughs> well, anyway, happy Corona, um, what's the word? Confinement day. Um, it's the first time I've parted my hair in the middle since high school. Uh, no haircuts for well over a month. Happy gaming.